You are going to be talking about solving these algebraically again. We just did yesterday graph both sides, see where they cross. That's a great way, but it's not algebraically. Your first test that you have in this class that's like a real test on new material, it's coming on Tuesday of next week. Okay? And it's uh, all the tests are smallish in that we don't have any gigantic, uh, you know, we guess we have cumulative tests, but they're only, they're only like once every month and a half or something. So the tests you have are all like medium sized. They're not, they're not, really small like a tiny quiz and they're not huge long tests but every test uh, that we have is Marzano style it's usually eight questions four are twos and four are threes and then one I guess nine questions one bonus like R4 okay so typically there's only eight problems you really have to do for your tests the next one's coming on Tuesday and it's about this the same thing we're doing right now that's the main thing on there is solving algebraically yes ma'am Gotcha. Tuesday, I'm the, the, in case for those listening at home, Tuesday is the college fair and Wednesday is still going to be the test. We're going to be up until that time just basically review, 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 a ton of review right before they take the test. So your last day of review, if you really want, you can watch the video for it. And otherwise, you'll be ready to take the test on Wednesday. We'll have practiced this stuff so much by then, you'll be really good at it. I hope. All right, so here are the types of problems and I want to circle the main parts. What's special about these places, they all have to be done last. Like they have to be the last step. I have to get rid of this first. I have to get rid of this and this first. I have to get rid of that and that. All these other things have to be done first. And then the last thing you do is either the absolute value or the square root. Here's another one that's the important part. So I get rid of that and I get rid of that. This kind, you should know how to factor those and just set them equal to zero. That should be easy. And if it won't factor, use quadratic formula, but usually we make them factor, like nine out of 10 times, because we don't really like the quadratic formula because the messy answers are so messy. And, but there might be one on there, but more likely factoring. Okay, so here's some examples. How would I solve this? Everybody write that one down. Start by adding eight to both sides. Then you're gonna divide by three. And you should be down to x minus one and if I add 8, that'd be 21. And then if I, I suppose I shouldn't skip any steps. I'm tempted to. Divide by 3, divide by 3, and then I'd have 7. Get that so far. That should be the easy part. Now, this is the part where you gotta, you've learned something new. You've learned that there's two answers. What's underneath the scribble there has to either be 7 or negative 7. Do you get that? Because that's what absolute values do. So then... I have to write either x minus 1 is 7 or x minus 1 is negative 7. So you have to write two equations and you solve both equations. That was just on your little practice test too. One like this. Add 1 to both sides, x equals 8. Add 1 to both sides, x equals, be careful on this one, negative 7 plus 1 makes negative 6. There's your two answers. Raise your hand if you're comfy with that kind. Okay, good. I don't need to even practice the next one then because that's just like it. This is a little different, very similar, but you're going to get rid of the square root differently. You don't have to show the minus 6. You can just go 4 root x plus 5 equals, and then subtract 6 in your head and get 4. And then you can divide by 4 in your head and go square root of x plus 5 equals 4 divided by 4 is 1. You see, I'm just saving myself a little bit of messiness on my paper by doing some of the work in my head. I am not saying you should do all the work in your head. You should do some of the work in your head and then write a step. Do some more in your head and write a step. And now this is the part where I don't break it in two parts. These I fix by doing what? Squaring. I square this and I square that. And then I have the squared and the square root cancel each other out. X plus 5 equals 1. As simple as that. Subtract 5, x equals negative 4. Raise your hand if you followed that. You get that. Okay, good. This next one, I'm going to make it a little bit harder because uh, if... I'm going to put an x there. Everybody try this one, and let's see who catches the little trick to doing this one. Leave yourself plenty of room. When you're making these problems, you might need five, six steps. That's what makes pre-calc hard. 
each individual step is pretty easy, but there's so many steps. First thing, add 9 to both sides. Plus 9, plus 9. 2 root x minus 5 equals 11x plus 9. How am I supposed to add that? You can't. So you write 11x plus 9. Next, I have to get rid of the 2. So I divide by 2. Divide by 2. How am I supposed to divide that? You can't. So you leave it just like that. Square root of x minus 5. Am I done yet? Is x alone yet? No. Keep asking yourself, is x alone yet? Because that's what you're doing when you're solving, getting x alone. How do I get that squared? Our square root off of there, I square it, I square it, and hopefully by now you have caught on that squared means times itself. You can't just square everything in here. you got to times this by itself. 11x minus 9 over 2 times 11x minus, is it plus 9? Sorry, you're right, I dropped the minus into a plus at some point, or plus into a minus at some point. Anyway, it's supposed to be plus, I believe you. And then all over 2, there we go. So now, all I did was square both sides, and it caused this problem. Now I've got to do FOIL on top, and will you have stuff like that? Absolutely. That's what makes this pre-calc. Otherwise, you seriously did the other stuff in algebra, solving simple equations. That was a long time ago. So 11x plus 9 times 11x plus 9 all over 4. And now, real hard part is, of course, the foiling. Just foil that sucker out. X minus 5 equals 11 times 11 is 121 X squared. Outside, 9 times 11 is 99 X plus another 99 X makes 180, 198 x, and the last would be 9 times 9 is 81, all over 4, and what's the goal here again? Try to get what? x alone. Is x alone yet? No, I just got to subtract 5, but if I just go minus 5 and put it here, can't do that. You're right, add 5. If I add 5 to both sides and I go plus 5 right here, that's wrong. I have to use fourths. If I add 5 here, i got to add 5 over here, but I can't add 5 by just saying plus 5. I could say plus 5 over 1 and then change it to have a common denominator. What's a good denominator with 1 and 4? Four? 4 is. So then I could make this into times it by 4. So 5 times 4 is 20 fourths. Now the 20 can be added up on top. All right, we're done on this one, but my point on this one was that you're going to have to be able to Notice that something like this, when I square it, has to get foiled out. That's the hardest of the hard problems, and it's not that bad. It's just a lot of steps. Okay, so without further ado, your worksheet is right here. I'll do a couple of them with you. I do need some scores from you, but first, let's get started on this. Okay, here we go. Number one, that one's really easy, and let's just do it. But then let's skip number two, and uh, let's go to number four. Is good because you have to learn how to clear that fraction out of there. You're crossing off number two, yes. And I'm looking for others you can cross off. I think we could cross off number five. That one's a little too easy and not necessary. Uh, and that's about it. The rest of the page is mostly review on the back side, so that's good. All right. Uh, no one we're going to do. So on number one, did we even, maybe that's one of the ones I just did? No. Is that the one of the ones that's from the review? Yeah. Like I did it for you on the board? All right, I'm leaving it as assigned, but you, if you took good notes, you've already got it. You'll be able to copy it from there. All right, moving on to number three then. Number three. We didn't do number one? 
Okay, I will do a number one then with you because apparently I had one number different, but I just want to make sure you get how to do an easy one anyway. So your first step on that, everybody add seven to both sides. Add seven, ten. Next step, divide by two. So I got x minus one equals five. Next step, I would call it splitting it into two equations. It's split it. What are the two equations? x minus one and x minus one. And one of them equals, equals what? One of them equals 5, and the other equals negative 5. Because remember, what's underneath here can either be 5 or negative 5. So we set 1 equal to 5, 1 equal to negative 5. Solve your two equations there, and that should have been easy. Let's go on to number 6. Number 6 is one of those kind where we're going to have a little bit of foiling to do. Number 6. Square root of 3x plus 1, and then I'd say plus 3 equals x. And then I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. I'm going to cheat and just go like this, minus 3. You can do that too. Now, if I'm going to square both sides, some people are still not going to get it. And they're going to say, oh, x squared minus 9. You can't do that. You've got to foil it or you'll get the wrong answer. And from there, it'll just be a nice little quadratic. And once it's a quadratic, you just got to remember how to factor it. Or if it won't factor, use quadratic formula. x squared, outside, inside, minus 6x, last, plus 9. Move this junk over to the other side so it equals 0. You always want them to equal 0. All right, that's enough help on that one. Okay, so... That's all I have for the recording for today. Fairly easy day.